AZ900 is one of the most popular exam in Microsoft Azure Stack, a fundamental exam that gives you a kickstart to enter the exciting world of Microsoft Azure. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this part 11 of AZ900 exam series in 2023, I bring to you 20 latest and important key questions. All our questions are well researched and supported by Microsoft documentation so that you can validate the answers and also do some self-study. And as always, there will be loads of exam tips and please watch the video till the very end as I will tell you how to get a free PDF file containing all the questions and the answers discussed in this video. This PDF is very important for you to do some offline studies. And please watch the previous parts of this series, 185 latest questions fully synced with Microsoft syllabus are already covered, all the links shared in the description box. So let's gear up and prepare for AZ900 exam. So let's begin part 11 with question number 186. It says that you are working on understanding all the key terms when it comes to international standards, data privacy and data protection policies. Which of the following choices pertains to the following? An organization that defines international standards across all industries. Your options are GDPR, ISO, NIST or Azure government. And the correct answer for this question is ISO. So what is ISO? Well, ISO means International Organization for Standardization and this is an independent non-governmental organization and the world's largest developer of voluntary international standards. And this is the exact ask of the question. The question asks to tell the organization that defines international standards across all industry. And that's why we have chosen ISO as the answer to this question. Now moving on to another related question. It says that you are working on understanding all the key terms when it comes to international standards, data privacy and data protection policies. Which of the following pertains to the following? And it says an organization that defines standards used by United States government. Your options are GDPR, ISO, NIST or Azure government. And this time the correct answer is NIST. So what is NIST? Well, NIST means National Institute of Standards and Technology. And this is an organization that promotes and maintains measurement standards and guidance to help organization access their risk. Now let's move on to one more related question. Question number 188. Question says that you're working on understanding all the key terms when it comes to international standards, data privacy and data protection policies. Which of the following pertains to the following? A European policy that regulates data privacy and data protection. Once again, the options are similar. GDPR, ISO, NIST and Azure government. And this time my friends, the correct answer is GDPR. So what is GDPR? Well, GDPR means General Data Protection Regulation. And what does it do? It's a European Union that gives access to people to manage the personal data that has been collected by an employer or other type of agency or organization. Personal data is defined very broadly under GDPR as any data that relates to an identified or identifiable natural person. And in case you want to dig down on what exactly is GDPR, you can click on this link here. And then you will reach to this site. This site will give you all the details or all the intricacies that comes under GDPR. A very important policy in case you are dealing with any data which is related to any European person or any European organization. Links to all these documents related to GDPR, ISO and NIST are right there in the description box. You can read whenever your time permits. And now let's move on to the question number 189. It's a yes no kind of question. Let's read the first statement. It says a platform as a service solution that hosts web apps in Azure provides full control of operating system that hosts application. Yes or no. And this one my friends is an incorrect statement. And this is because past solution do not provide access to the operating system. The Azure web app service provides you an environment for you to host your web application. But behind the scenes, the web app are hosted on virtual machine running on IIS. But please note in case of pass or platform as a service and Azure web apps, you have no direct access to the virtual machines or the operating system that operate under the hood. So that's why we have chosen a no for this statement. Moving on to the next statement, it says a platform as a service solution that hosts web apps in Azure web apps in Azure 
provides the ability to scale the platform automatically yes or no and this one my friends is a correct statement and this is because a past solution that hosts web apps in azure does provides the ability to scale the platform automatically and this ability is known as auto scaling and once again i will repeat behind the scenes web apps are hosted on virtual machines that run ias so what does auto scaling mean well auto scaling simply means to add more load balanced virtual machines in case you have more load on your web applications and that's why we have selected yes for this statement moving on to the third statement it says a platform as a service solution that hosts web apps in azure provides professional development services to continuously add features to custom applications yes or no and this one once again is a true statement and why so because platform as a service provides a framework that developers can build upon to develop or customize cloud based application now let's move on to the question number 190 again a yes no kind of question the first statement says that azure provides flexibility between capital expenditure or capex and operational expenditure also known as opex yes or no and this one my friends is a true statement see traditionally it expenses has been considered as a capital expenditure because in good old days every big organization would certainly have their own data centers data centers are complex and big facilities hosting hundreds and thousands of computers all linked to each other and other resources as well and of course to build a data center you would need a lot of capital and that's why there were huge capital expenditure up front to set up a data center but with cloud services today they provide flexibility between capital expenditure and operational expenditure while you can still use your on premises data centers or all other resources you can avail the benefits of pay as you go pricing model with any cloud provider such as microsoft azure amazon aws or google gcp and that's why this is a correct statement moving on to the next one it says that if you create two azure virtual machine that uses b2s size each virtual machine will always generate same monthly cost yes or no so what is your answer think for a moment pause the video and tell me the answers in the comment section well for now the correct answer for this statement is no and this is because two azure virtual machines using the exactly same size or maybe you can say exactly same configuration could still have different disk configuration and now please pay attention because this is a very important azure concept whenever you are building azure solution you must be aware that even if you build exactly two same virtual machines they can still cost differently and there could be multiple reasons for this for example they can have different disk configuration and not only that they can have different other resources attached to the virtual machines that are priced differently in different geographical locations so that's why even if two virtual machines are using same b2s size they can still cost differently and please always keep this important azure concept in your mind and with that let's move on to the third statement it says when an azure machine is stopped you still continue to pay storage cost associated with the virtual machine yes or no and this one my friends is a true statement and this once again is a critical azure concept because in case you do not understand this azure concept very clearly you will land up incurring huge cost on azure virtual machines because you might think that you have stopped azure virtual machine but still you would be paying for other resources like storage costs even if the azure virtual machine is stopped although we have talked on this concept many times but let's summarize once again so when you stop an azure virtual machine the machine itself is stopped and you're not exactly paying the cost of virtual machine however you still pay for the storage costs associated with the virtual machine the most common storage that are associated with virtual machine are dis attached to the virtual machines there are also other storage costs associated with virtual machine such as storage for diagnostics data and azure virtual machine backups so it's a good practice always shut down your virtual machines whenever you are done with them and here comes question number 191 once again yes no kind of question the first statement says that you can copy a virtual machine from one subscription to another subscription yes or no and this one my friends is a incorrect statement the second statement says that you can move azure virtual machines to another azure region yes or no and this one is a correct statement and the last statement says that you can move a virtual machine from one subscription to another subscription yes or no and this one my friends is a true statement so please observe the difference between statement a and statement c 
basically you can move a virtual machine from one subscription to another but you cannot copy virtual machine from one subscription to another subscription and this is because copying means that you are creating one more existence of same virtual machine in another subscription and that is not possible and now comes question number 192 it says the microsoft intune product is software as a service platform as a service or infrastructure as a service and the correct answer for this question is option a software as a service and now comes question number 193 at which osi layer does the express route operate your options are layer 2 layer 3 layer 5 or layer 7 and the correct answer is option b layer 3 and you can validate this answer on this microsoft documentation that talks about what is azure express route and when you read the key benefits in context of express route the very first benefit says that layer 3 connectivity between your on premises network and the microsoft cloud through a connectivity provider and this is exactly where we can validate our answer layer 3 connectivity let's move on with the question number 194 it says what are the two benefits of cloud computing each correct answer presents a complete solution and please note that each correct selection is worth one point your options are enables the rapid provisioning of resources has increased administrative complexity the third one is has the same configuration option as on premises and the last one is shift capital expenditure to operating expenditure and the correct answer for this question is option a and option d let's move on to the question number 195 it says what is a feature of azure virtual network your options are resource cost analysis packet inspection geo redundancy and the last one is isolation and segmentation and the correct answer for this question is option d isolation and segmentation so what exactly is the need to isolate the resources see isolation enables you to control governance policies set by the organization on the other hand the segmentation is the ability to group related assets that are part of workload operations and friends we are going to talk about isolation and segmentation in more detail in the upcoming part part 19 of our azure fundamental full code series and in this upcoming part we are going to also talk about azure virtual network and azure subnets very important concept so in case you have not subscribed to the channel please do it now and press that bell icon so that you don't miss any notification of all these upcoming important videos and with the belief that you have liked this video and subscribed to the channel let's move on here comes question number 196 it says dash enables azure resources to be deployed close to the users your options are elasticity geo distribution high availability and the last one is scalability and the correct answer for this question is option b geo distribution so please understand my friends that because of geo distribution you can deploy apps and data to regional data centers around the globe and thereby you can ensure that your customers will always have the best performance in their region and now comes question number 197 it says that your company's infrastructure includes a number of business units that each need a large number of various azure resources for everyday operation the resources required by each business unit are identical you are required to sanction a strategy to create azure resources automatically the solution given is that you recommend that azure api management service to be included in the strategy does this meet the goal yes or no and the correct answer for this question is no and this is because azure api management service is a way to create and manage customer api for existing backend services but the question is asking about the way to create azure resources automatically or you can also say on the fly so what is the correct service let me show you two more variations of the same question and then you will also find the correct answer so here comes question number 198 question is exactly the same the solution however this time says that you recommend that the management groups to be included in the strategy does this meet the goal yes or no and this time also my friends this is an incorrect solution so this is because management groups are just like containers that help you manage access policies and compliance across multiple subscription and they have nothing to do with creation of azure resources automatically so that's why this is an incorrect solution now let's check out question number 199 question once again is exactly the same this time the solution says that you recommend azure resource management templates to be included in the strategy 
does this meet the goal yes or no and this time my friends this is a correct solution so basically azure resource manager templates are javascript object notation also known as json files that define infrastructure and configuration of your projects and are great way to create azure resources automatically and now comes question number 200 which says that which of the following describes platform as a service your options are users are responsible for purchasing installing configuring and managing their own software that includes operating systems middleware and application the second option is users create and deploy applications quickly without having to worry about managing the underlying infrastructure and the last option is users pay an annual or monthly subscription and the correct option that describes platform as a service is option b let's move on with the question number 201 it says that you are developing an application and want to focus on building testing and deploying you don't want to worry about managing the underlying hardware or software which cloud service type is best for you your options are infrastructure as a service software as a service or platform as a service and the correct answer for this question is option c platform as a service now let's move on to the question number 202 it says that you are running a virtual machine in public cloud using ias or infrastructure as a service which model correctly reflects how the resource is managed your options are shared responsibility model option b is cloud user management model and the last option is user management model and the correct answer is option a shared responsibility model so basically my friends under the shared responsibility model management of resources is shared between the cloud service provider and the end user the cloud service provider such as microsoft azure being responsible for the cloud service infrastructure and the end user that is you being responsible for the services that are being configured and managed correctly and now let's move on to the question number 203 it says that you plan to migrate several servers from an on-premises network to azure what is an advantage of using public cloud service for the servers over an on-premises network your options are the public cloud is owned by the public and not a private corporation the second one is the public cloud is a crowdsourcing solution that provides cooperation with the ability to enhance the cloud and the third one says all the public cloud resources can be freely accessed by every member of the public and the last option says the public cloud is a shared entity whereby multiple corporations each use a portion of resources in the cloud and the correct answer for this question is option d and now let's move on to the question number 204 it says in which type of cloud model are all hardware resources owned by a third party and shared between multiple tenants your options are private cloud hybrid cloud and the third one is public cloud and of course the correct answer for this question is option c public cloud and i'm pretty sure all of you know that microsoft azure amazon aws google gcp are three examples of public cloud services and all these service providers own their own hardware and there are multiple tenants which are nothing but the customers all these customers shared all these available hardware resources and here comes question number 205 it says a company wants to migrate their current on-premises servers to the cloud utilizing microsoft azure and they require that their servers are running even in the event that a single data center goes down which of the following terms best refers to the concept that needs to be implemented to fill this requirement your options are fault tolerance elasticity scalability or low latency and the correct answer to this question is option a fault tolerance see the hint is already given in the question the question is already saying that the company requires that their servers are running even in the event that a single data center goes down and fault tolerance is a concept in which a computer system or a set of infrastructure is designed in such a way that even if one component fails a backup component takes over the operations immediately so that there is no loss of service so that's why fault tolerance is the correct answer to this question so that was all for today and friends to get the free pdf file of all the 20 questions with the answers discussed in this part 11 you need to first become eligible by liking this video and subscribing to the channel and then you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 187 195 and 205 send in your answers to our email id connect us at the rate the techblackboard.com and please do share our videos to all your loved ones who are also preparing for microsoft azure certifications
And if you want to learn Azure fundamentals in a detailed manner, please watch this playlist on the left hand side. And in case you are preparing for AZ104, watch this video with 191 questions on the right hand side. And not just that, there are loads of videos on other Microsoft Azure certifications. You can find them all in our channel. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.